Hello everyone, welcome to the next mission in the Big Show campaign. This is Reflected Simulation's Spitfire campaign for DCS, tracking the experience of Pierre Klostermann. In this mission, we are picking up an American raid that is returning from the ball bearing factories in Schweinfurt. We are to get airborne and form up as a wing before climbing up to 25,000 feet and heading to a rendezvous at Rouen in France. There are a couple of notes I've made from this briefing just for my own benefit. I'm using channel Bravo on the radio. We're going to take off on runway 35. After taking off, we're going to circle and form up the entire wing, at which point we will then head out, changing to channel Charlie on the radios. So fairly straightforward, I hope. Let's get into the mission and see if we can bring these B-17s home. So there's the other squadron up ahead. Here we are on the tarmac and we'll jump in the cockpit and get the Spitfire started. All clear. Switches on. Okay, switches are on. Start a cover and boost to cover open. Fuel cock to the on position. Fuel pressure valve open. Fuel pump on. Primer unlocked and let's go for about five pumps of the primer. Nothing too dramatic. Okay, we'll shove the brakes on full tiny bit of throttle and a little bit of trim just before I start the engine so I don't forget it once we get taxiing. I won't need cockpit lighting. So all clear, where are those troopies? They've marched away now, should be able to get this thing cranking. And mixture for rich. Very good. We'll enable the gun sight. I'll leave the safety on. No, I'm going to turn the safety off. I have a habit of forgetting about the safety. And we'll flick the external lighting on. Canopy remains open whilst we taxi out. We will be first to get airborne on 3-5, which is the runway just to my left, it looks like. We're pretty much on the reciprocal heading right now, so... Okay, brakes off. Almost fully off. And you can see I've got a wingman already... Just ticking over and getting ready to get airborne there. Um, it looks like we've got a crosswind. Maybe a fraction of a headwind, but it's going to be mostly a crosswind from the right. Sky is clear. There's the other squadron over there. Right, lining up here. Just checking my trim before we go. There's the other chap. I will roll because the AI doesn't always come to a complete stop in the right place. Nice daylight takeoff for this one. No trouble with uh, not being able to see various things. Gear up. Stabilize the nose, get into my climb attitude, gear indicator shows us up, flap indicator is up, yep, flaps are up. There's the lead squadron. Reducing throttle and RPM, and channel Bravo. Left-hand orbit. RPM and boost go right down now. At this point, I'm going to turn the external tank on. Okay, main fuel cock is now off. We will close the canopy and turn off the exterior lights. So we're set now. All I have to do is get ourselves in position formation-wise and we can depart down towards Rouen.
can see the other sections starting to form up just below me there are still some aircraft getting airborne Now look behind, there is a mass of aircraft and we've still got the AI getting airborne there. You can see aircraft still taking off. So it's going to be some minutes before the entire wing is formed. I've got further aircraft from my squadron joining from the left and I've got the other squadron which I believe is 132 over there circling in the left hand orbit. After a few orbits, we are now turning on to 155, which is our heading towards the RV with the bombers. You can see 132 scattered out behind me and my boys a bit closer in. We're going to try and make a fairly rapid climb up to 25 Angels, Angels 25, and then we will level off and maintain the heading. So let's go. Here we are then, arriving at 25,000 feet now. We are about mid-channel still on about the right heading a couple of degrees off but that's okay I'm gonna re reduce my throttle down now to two and a half to three pounds boost and bring the RPM right back so we'll drop into a cruise okay there's a message saying that we need to hurry up because the big boys are being heavily engaged. I'm just going to maintain my heading and I'm going to keep a lookout for these guys. Angels 23, so heading and height is good. You can see my chaps strung out behind me and we've now got contrails from the top cover squadron. That looks gorgeous. I don't want to stare at that for too long because the battle is out ahead of us somewhere. Airspeed's now 200, so we've got good airspeed. We are just going to maintain this heading now until we see the bombers. Bomb aircraft, keep looking for the bombers. And remember, say the Malange rule never fly straight and level for more than 30 seconds in the combat area. So we're just approaching the French coast right now, about to go over the beaches here. We just had a transmission telling us to keep sharp lookout for the bombers again so I suspect they're going to be within visual range shortly. I'm a little high. I have climbed the wing up by about a thousand feet. I don't want the bombers slipping past underneath us though. So I'm going to start a gentle weave just so that I can check the area under the nose and I'm going to weave the squadron or the wing very gently left and right as we proceed on our heading. We're just about bang on the correct heading. So we're only 20 or 30 kilometers now from the RV. It shouldn't take us terribly long. Anything that's above us we will see up here. We're right on the contrail altitude. So if Jerry shows up he will be pretty obvious unless he climbs up underneath which, us which is not going to be easy for him okay I think we can say that we are feet dry over France now which means I think I'm gonna drop the reserve tank unfortunately the shadows are just flicking quite a bit during this mission. It's the right combination of the sun angle and the 
cloud formations to get that flicking. It happens quite a lot in DCS under these conditions. So apologies for that. Well, I shouldn't be apologizing. Eagle Dynamics should be apologizing. But it just might look a bit weird in the video. It's out of my control. The river is over here. Now, Rua is on the river. Right there. It's a big city. So we should see the bombers right soon. I know we've got plenty of fuel now to get home. We can engage in combat and give ourselves a good 10 minute scrap, 15 minute scrap and get home okay. So very shortly I'm going to ditch the tank. Got the bombers, they're above us on our left. They might be the bombers, they might also be enemy. So fuel cock, main cock on, secondary fuel tank off, and release slash jettison. Let's climb. A large formation of aircraft over here. I'm guessing there are 60 or 70 of them. We are going to now go into a rapid climb, high boost, and high RPM. I'm going to make it 2800 RPM in about 8 pounds boost, which is close to what I, maximum I can achieve. These guys are up at 26 and a half. Stuff is always higher than they say it's going to be. Every single mission, they've always underreported the altitude. So I'm glad I gained myself that extra thousand feet or so. This is making my life just a little bit easier here. Let's have a look what's going on. I've got one bomber falling out. I've got a large number of tracers being fired. Sorry for the flicking there. Uh, that's borderline embarrassing, to be honest. I suspect that we are going to get in a world of hurt when we get close in GPU wise. Ah, uh, DCS, this is terrible. I mean, look at this. This flicking is horrific. It's embarrassing. You cannot put out a flight simulator that does that. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. And to be honest, I don't even think the the seller of this product is sorry either. Let's go. We've got a couple of fighters in amongst the bombers there, but they're not doing much. The thing is these bombers are pretty deadly. Let's turn out in front. Lots and lots of FPS loss now. Five o'clock. Oh dear. Okay, there's, so there's a bit of racial tension happening on comms. I've got... Okay, sounds like we're attacking. Guns are armed. Right, let's get stuck in. There's a Jerry. There's Jerry's at the back. There's Jerry's down below. I've got one coming out in front of the bomber formation now. Um, I'm going to focus on him and see what he does. He's now swinging around, diving on one. Nope. It's too dangerous here for me. That one's been sliced up. Here we go. This one's trying to make an attack run. He's being sliced up already. Ah, oh, these guys are getting nailed by the B-17s. Let's try and get some guns on this guy before the... Actually, I think the B-17's going to finish him off. Oh, his engine's already out. There's another one there. Nope, that's a B-17 falling out of the sky. What's that? That's square wings but I can't get to it stay with the bombers Spitfire German thing is that the B-17 gunners are so effective that I really don't need to do much here
that's the German there, contrailing in front of me in the left hand dive. Right, see if I can actually get on this guy's tail. I think he's going to try and make another pass on the bomber formation. It's a 109. He is rather slow compared to me. I'm unstable. Okay, a few hits there. And breaking off, looking for the bomber's stream. A lot of stuff broken down there. That's got square wings, I think. That might also have square wings. Yep. Come on. Got him. Breaking off. Check six. Clear left. Uh, sorry, clear right. Clear left. No, not clear left. Bandit. Okay. He's underneath me. I've got a little bit of energy advantage, but I'm sloppy. I think I managed to get behind this guy. Is that a German though? Or is it one of my wingmen? Ah, it's one of my guys. That's frustrating. There, yellow nose. He was trying to get on my six. Okay, let's just drop the throttle. Power on. Could be a 109A. Uh, sorry, 190A this one. Got him. His engine's out. Okay. Two aircraft behind. Spitfires, I believe. Whoa, what's this? This is the rest of the squadron. Contacts ahead. There's the bomber formation way up there under heavy attack. Let's go, boys. I've got to try and catch the bombers. Spitfire's all behind. Did you see that there? I got him. Yeah, well done. I didn't see it though, because I'm a long way back. Boost and engine are okay. I'm going to bring the RPM back a fraction as we try and catch up to the 17s, the forts. My guys are all here. Now, I deliberately did not tell them to engage over the comm system because I find that the AI tends to be really quick at ending battles. Two contacts. Oh, dogfight. One o'clock. Two more. Diving. Twelve o'clock. Okay, we're heading back into the scrap now. That looks interesting there. I think he's falling out, though. No, he's leveling off. Try and gain on him. Another one up there. Time to check six again. Couple of contacts really, really far back, perhaps. Could be parachutes. I've got two up above me, and I've got a small scrap developing behind the bombers and below them. I'm surprised the Germans haven't broken off. What is that? What is that? That could be German. Trying to saddle up on me. No, I don't think it is. I'm trying to slip in through the formation. Yeah, it is. That's got square wings. Guys, open your eyes. I've got a German on my 11 high. Pretty sure. Yep, thank you. I'm on him. Yep, that's a German. 
Oh, he's shooting. I don't have the airspeed for this. He's got that guy. I can't catch him. I don't have the airspeed for this. Oh, break, break, break. Break, you fool. He's not breaking. This is uh, reminiscent of a few World War II stories I've read. Okay, now the German's breaking off because he's a crap shot. Maybe he sees I'm here. Maybe he checked his, checked his shoulder for a second. I'm gaining very quickly. This guy's toast. Hit him there. Hit him there. Hit him again. Hit him again. Again. And he's out. Okay, he wasn't really doing much, that guy. Let's get back on the bombers. Where are they? Still under attack. Far out. This is a determined assault from the Luftwaffe today. Oh my guys, starting to form up again behind. Spitfire's coming back. A couple of aircraft still falling out and something climbing up very rapidly underneath the bomber stream. So we're going to keep heading for them to see what that is. Yeah, that could be a German aircraft climbing up underneath. Oh, I've really got to give my engine a rest. Okay. That'll do. That'll do. What have we got out there? Nothing really. I've got to catch up to the bombers. 20,000 feet now. Everything's dropped down a little bit. I do have the squadron strung out behind me. So I'm not really at risk of being bounced. Airspeed is 250 indicated, so we should be going a bit quicker than those B-17s. I do have sight of English soil way up ahead. Could be beachy. Not quite sure what it is, but if we get to beachy head, then we should be fine. Oh, I see no indication of any more aircraft in the airspace now. It's all forts. I don't see any something over here. I don't see any aircraft with the B-17s, but I do have a single contact off to the left here. Small, single engine fighter. Can't tell what he is though. Full throttle. Seems like he's really pushing it, but I think he's RTB friendly. Let's not take the risk though. Airspeed 290. B-17s are in the clear. I'm highly confident that that's a friendly. France still perilously close behind. Those guys are certainly safe now. Right back on the throttle. Let's see what this guy is. I think he's gliding home on a bad engine, and that looks to be a Spitfire. It's got the big black disc of a propeller that they have in DCS for some reason. See what I mean? Can't see it now. As you zoom in, you get this big black circle around it. The other aircraft don't have that. I see two radiators underneath as well. Let's just drop down underneath so we can make out his wings.
actually, this might be German after all. What kind of wings have you got there, fella? No, those are rather elliptical. That's a spitty. I'll give him a fright, eh? Someone, someone's going to learn the lesson about checking six. Oi! Foxtrot, Foxtrot Tango. Right, there's the B-17s. That was a good, um, that was a good sortie. I think we got three, maybe four. It depends on whether that first one went down, I think. We'll have to look at the post-mission debrief. My guys are way behind, slowly catching up. Okay, so that brings the combat section of this mission to a close, I think. The B-17s are clear now, happy to head home. I'm going to depart the B-17s and we will turn for home base. Approaching the home field there, down on my 11 low. I'm in a bit of weather. There is some rain sort of going strange sideways kind of action. It's a bit hard to tell. Okay, we're kind of flying into it. It's a bit weird. It's a bit difficult to tell which direction it's going. But um, down there is the field. We're going to land on 3-5. The same runway we took off on, obviously. I'm going to circle around, putting the coast on my tail, and then we will come in and land on our left hand. So, external lights on, and you can see my wingmen all doing the same. I've put a little bit of cockpit lighting on just a bit earlier as we were on approach because we're getting towards the dusk now. We'll increase the prop pitch just a little here. Trimming out, trimming out, trimming out. Done it. 5,000 indicated. I've got a green very light which was just launched so that's good news and I'm going to land down at the threshold by the, that fuel tank down there so I've got one of my wingmen flying perilously close here. I'm not sure they realize I'm setting up for a landing. They look quite nice with the uh, external lights on. Right, tiny bit of brake, about 5% brakes, 120 indicated airspeed, just give ourselves a little bit of boost here from the idle position, level flight down into the downwind, we'll turn on the base in just a few moments, there's my threshold over there. See if I can get 130 in the downwind, it's not terribly bad a speed. Still sinking a little, or we'll nose up. Okay. 125 in the downwind. Spacing's a bit wide, so I'm just gonna creep in a bit closer before I tip the left wing in on the base turn. Got a nice view of the threshold. Okay, a nice, very wide base turn here. Bring in the throttle back. We'll open the canopy. sunlight. The sun's just bouncing in and out of a cloud behind me I think there. Yep. Flashing in and out of a cloud. Let's put the landing gear down. Put a drag there, nose dropping a fraction. Gear shows us down, flaps now, back on the stick, flaps down. There we 
go. Flaps and gear are down. One, one zero on rolling onto final approach. Still on the curve, keeping the airfield over in that window to my left there. Bit slow. One o five. I want to touch down at about 90, but I need 100 across the fence if possible. It's always my target. Airspeed. There we go, there's 100. There's the very light, the green very light. The wingman suddenly realises I'm landing, so he breaks off. Throttle back. Coasting in. And I'm going to throttle on just as I bring the nose up, because I have a steep approach. So as I bring the nose up, I'm just going to throttle on so we can fly it down a little bit, and then throttle off. Front wheels are down, back on the stick, two-point landing. Tail wheel is down firmly now, a little bit of right rudder just to bring us off the Good. Let's taxi away from here. We'll leave this field clear for the next aircraft. There is a taxiway just ahead. I'm going to use the grass. Turn the aircraft through 180 degrees there, bring it to a stop, just kick it round, kick that shopping trolley wheel over. Facing into the sun there, we can shut the engine down. Full brakes. We'll go to the external views. Very pleasant, a good mission. Let's check the results. Here are the results then. It looks like I was credited with three victories, as you can see there. Scrolling down through the notes, it's quite a long way down. There's so much action, so I don't think we want to review this debriefing log. Just too much stuff went on. We'll take the headline, though, that I got three victories on this flight. And that moves us on to the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did.